There are three practices that as Christians were called to live out during Lent, and they might sound antiquated, they might sound tired, uh, but they still have a tremendous power to transform us from within. Those three are prayer, almsgiving, and fasting. Perhaps we can start talking about it the way Stephen Covey used to talk about some of these things. Stephen Covey, uh, he wrote the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He talked to businessmen. And he would note this principle from psychology that a lot of times we can act kind of like an animal would, where there are things that are happening we can call that the stimulus, things that are happening to us. And then immediately what follows is a response. So if our dog is walking down the street and another dog barks, you can think, well, the response is either to bark back or to run away. But that's kind of it. If the dog is hungry, he's going to look for food. If the dog is in mating season, he's going to look for a partner. Is that simple. And human beings kind of surprise us because we can make a space between the stimulus and the response. And this space where I experience something, something that might be difficult, something that might be uh, a craving, I can create a space and decide what I will do. And this space where we make a decision, this is the place of freedom. And I would argue that these three practices that we do during Lent really help us work out that muscle because it is a muscle that it can, some we notice that some people have it very strong, they're very able to choose their responses and other people, they're just going with what's happening. And we see it in ourselves sometimes we just can't stop scrolling to the next video or watching the next story on Facebook and we find that we're not doing it out of freedom. So these three practices, how do they help us? Well, the first one, we could talk about almsgiving. What happens when I engage in that? Well, the first thing that happens is that I stop looking at myself. When I'm looking at myself, most, most of the time I'm thinking of what I need, what I don't have, what I need to fix, what's wrong, right? And this question of almsgiving, what it does is it makes me wonder what are the needs of my brothers and sisters around me? It makes me raise my eyes. And, and when I do that, immediately something is shifting within me. I'm not preoccupied with responding to whatever thing is happening within me that I need to fix, these little things that sometimes are annoyances, but I look at somewhere else. Prayer. How does prayer help me grow in freedom? Well, Ignatius says that in prayer, there are three internal things that are activated. Our memory, our understanding, and our will. The three are being touched by God. So our will, when I'm in relationship with God, I see what God's will is for the world and for me, what God's dreams are. And then I try to move my will a little bit more in God's direction, towards God's dreams, towards love, towards justice. Uh, my understandings, a lot of times I have understandings that kind of uh, determine me to act in particular ways. If I experience violence and I see something similar to that, I immediately will try to defend myself with all my might. If I've experienced a lacking uh, growing up, now that I'm an adult, I might be looking for that thing desperately whenever I don't have it. Whether it be connection, love, food, whatever it is, pleasure. Uh, and, and, and we have understanding that we develop sometimes as kids that we let the Lord touch those understandings and tell us how He sees the world, how God sees the world. 
and our kind of our mind maps get improved when we see the world towards God's eyes. And finally, our, our memory. All of these things happen because things that are real have happened to us. Stuff in our memory, uh, we remember the difficulties, we remember the tough things, and, and a lot of times we try to protect ourselves against uh, some of the bad things that have happened from happening again. And uh, when we let the Lord touch our memory, we find healing. And when we get healed, that also grows my capacity to see the world differently and to try things differently. Because the world maybe is a tough place. Bad things might have happened to me, but I can also see the hope. I can also see the goodness. And that's not all there is when I see the world towards God's eyes. And finally, we can talk about fasting. So how is fasting helping us to grow in freedom? Well, we used to see it as a way of punishing the flesh because the body is bad and the soul is good. And what that missed was that God gave us our body, that our body is also a temple of the Holy Spirit, that there's space for grace in our body also. If, we're body, if our body is healthy, we can also embrace others and, and do things for the world and, and be engaged in the world. So the body is not necessarily bad, but can also be touched by grace. And so how do we understand fasting in a positive way? Well, what the church tells us is on Friday, we'll stop eating meat. And two days are in Lent on, on Holy Friday and on Ash Wednesday, we'll have a normal meal. And the other two will be smaller meals, less than, than, than a full meal. What is this about? Well, it's kind of like a pattern interruption. So when I stop eating meat, it's just a small inconvenience. I got to change. How do I go about uh, getting my, my nutrients? <laughs> uh, people that are vegetarian, they're, they already are pretty aware that it takes a little more effort just to go around and finding the right stuff. So when we stop eating meat, what do we say? Well, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm always doing this. I'm used to this stimulus and having the response. I'm hungry. I eat. Uh, and now I'm going to change it up. So I'm going to choose something different. I'm going to choose now to eat fish or to eat veggies. So this act is an act of freedom. You can see it. It's very much like the dog is hungry and the dog eats. When we do this, we say, I'm hungry. I normally do this. I'm going to do it differently. Mm. I'm hungry on Friday and Wednesday and I'm not going to eat a full meal. Mm. That also tells me something about my capacity to not engage in behaviors. Because one of the greatest lies that we tell ourselves is that we can't change. One of the greatest lies that we tell ourselves is there's no way you can make a difference. You're kind of determined to act like that. You can't act out of freedom. And when we fast, we affirm that inner life from within us, that capacity for freedom. And we say, no, I can. <laughs> and we do it as a community so that we support each other and we show each other that we can. So this Lent, we have these three practices. They help us change our gaze. Instead of looking at myself, so I look at my brothers and sisters. Instead of looking at the world the way I see it, I try to look at the world the way God sees it. And, and even the way I look at my inner life, I try to see my inner life from the way, the point of view that God sees it, that God believes in us, that God believes in our freedom. And that when we engage with it, we become aware that it is there and that we can live out of that space. So hopefully during this Lent, we can look at 
the places where we can apply this in our relationships. We don't have to bark when we're back barked at. <laughs> we don't have to run away either. The way we engage with the world out of freedom might be to speak the truth, to speak with justice, but I don't have to be offending. I don't have to be mean and nasty. I can do it from love and also compassion. What a different way of being in the world. May the Lord help us. May the Lord be with us during this Lent. God bless.